Hi, today's video is the first of a series of videos that I'll be doing in response to an article called 8 Ridiculous Myths About Meat Consumption which is written by Chris Gunner on a website called Authority Nutrition. So Authority Nutrition is a website that promotes a high consumption of animal foods and restrictive of carbohydrates. This article that's written by Chris Gunner is talking about eight things that vegans might say to a meat eater to convince them to not eat meat. Durian Ryder did a video that responded to this article, but I wanted to do a series of videos that goes a bit more in detail about each point that the article makes. And I might refer a little bit to what Durian Ryder says as well, but I'll just uh, go more in depth. One of the myths that the article says is that meat rots in your colon. So they're saying that it doesn't rot in your colon. The article says, some people claim that meat doesn't get digested properly and rots in your colon. This is absolute nonsense, probably invented by dishonest vegans in order to scare people away from eating meat. What happens when we eat meat is that it gets broken down by stomach acid and digestive enzymes. In the small intestine, the proteins are broken down into amino acids and the fats are broken down into fatty acids. After that, they get absorbed over the digestive wall and into the bloodstream. There's nothing left to rot in your colon. If you want to know what really rots in your colon, it's indigestible plant matter, fiber, from vegetables, fruits, grains, and legumes. The human digestive system doesn't have the enzymes necessary to break down fiber, which is why it travels all the way to the colon. There it gets fermented, rots, by the friendly bacteria in the intestine, which turns it into nutrients and beneficial compounds like the short-chain fatty acid butyrate. This is what keeps the friendly bacteria alive and many studies are showing that feeding these bacteria properly is incredibly important for optimal health. So meat doesn't rot in the colon, plants do, and this is actually a good thing. So there's a number of links that Gunnar links to in his article and one of them is an, another article that's pro-meat and anti-vegan and it says, does meat rot in your colon? No, what does? Beans, grains and vegetables. And in this article that Gunnar linked to, it says, Humans don't have gut bacteria that can digest cellulose. This is why we can't eat grass at all. Why there is so little caloric value for us in vegetables. And why we call cellulose insoluble fiber. It comes straight out the back end. This fact alone proves that humans, while omnivores, are primarily carnivorous. We have a limited ability to digest some plant matter starches and disaccharides in order to get through bad times, but we cannot extract meaningful amounts of energy from the cellulose that forms the majority of edible plant matter as true herbivores can. This article that Gunnar linked to in order to prove his point is saying that because we aren't herbivores and we, we don't digest grass and cellulose, then we must be carnivores or omnivores. I think that's not a fair assumption to make because we, I mean, there's more than just carnivores and omnivores and herbivores in this world. And as humans, yes, we can eat meat and we can survive on meat, but it doesn't mean that it's the optimal food for us. And the fact that in your article, you said that, um, that plants feed the good bacteria in our intestines is saying that that's good for us, but meat doesn't have that insoluble fiber or any fiber at all. So just because it doesn't ferment in your intestines doesn't mean that it doesn't putrefy. Meat is made up of proteins and proteins do putrefy in your colon. So yeah, just changing the definition of rot to ferment doesn't mean that meat doesn't rot in your colon. So I tend to believe that humans are more like scavengers who can survive on a variety of things, but we would thrive on plant foods. So foods that are higher in fiber like fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes. And of course we don't get our caloric intake from vegetables, but we do get our caloric intake from high carbohydrate foods like fruits and starches and whole grains and legumes. So um, while we're not carnivores or omnivores or herbivores, you could say that we are starchivores or frugivores or a combination of them. So take a look at this chart which shows the anatomy of humans versus the rest of the animal kingdom. So 
So as you can see in this chart, the carnivores and omnivores have large differences between the humans and the frugivores. One of the things to note is that the carnivores and omnivores have strong hydrochloric acid and this acid helps to break down the proteins more efficiently than the weak hydrochloric acid in our bodies. So we can break down some protein to an extent, but it's not fully broken down in our stomach. And that is how meat putrefies in our colon. So the article that Gunnar links to does say that we can eat fruits, nuts, tubers and seeds, which we call grains and beans. In the case of seeds or grains, we can only eat them after grinding or some processing of them. But the author neglects to mention that rarely does anyone eat meat that is unprocessed or in its raw state. The meat that you buy in a supermarket is treated with um, sodium nitrates to make the flesh look more pink. It's preserved in some way because you're not eating it totally fresh. Does meat rot in your colon? Yes it does. It contains putrescine and endotoxin. Meat equals colon cancer. Look it up! I looked up both putrescine and bowel cancer and this is what I found. I found this on nutritionfacts.org about bowel cancer and bowel health. So on Dr. Greger's website, he says that a plant-based diet may be beneficial in the prevention, treatment, and even reversal of cancer. Total meat consumption has been linked to higher rates of colon cancer, which may be due in part to carcinogens called heterocyclic amines created by cooking muscle tissue. Poultry and other animal products contain viruses which are known to cause cancer in animals. The concern is that they may also be carcinogenic to humans who are exposed to the raw or undercooked meat. Additionally, fish and eggs contain dioxins that may contribute to colon cancer risk. Stool size may be an important factor in colon cancer prevention. A plant-based diet produces the healthiest stools and leads consistently to larger bowel movements. Protective foods include berries, broccoli, black beans, a number of herbal varieties of tea, carob, coffee and apples. Vitamin D may also play a role in preventing colon cancer. Dr. Greger covers colon cancer in his full-length presentation, Uprooting the Leading Causes of Death, which is one of my favorite lectures by him. He explores the role that diet may play in preventing, treating, and even reversing our top 15 killers. In addition, in another part of his website, he talks about colon health. Because of the fiber content, plant-based diets may produce healthier stools and lead to larger bowel movements, which is important for the prevention of a number of medical conditions. Interestingly, antioxidant-rich fruits and vegetables appear to increase stool size independent of fiber. Furthermore, plant-based diets may facilitate healthy gut flora, which is what Gunnar's article was saying as well, and this may contribute to weight loss. This includes plant foods such as dragon fruit, even nuts, seeds, and popcorn, which apparently lower diverticulitis risk. I googled putrescine and this is what I found. The smell of a decomposing body is made up of all sorts of interesting compounds, but amines and sulfurous molecules make up the stinkier end of the spectrum. Most of these amines come from the breakdown of the proteins in the corpse, and two of them have such fetid odors that they have been named putrescine after the process of putrefaction and cadaverin, after the Latin-derived word for a corpse, cadaver. That's why the poo of carnivorous animals smells more pungent than that of herbivorous animals like rabbits or sheep. So in conclusion, it's reasonable to assume that if food stays in our body for at least 24 hours before it leaves, then animal foods will be putrefying in our gut. Our stomach acid isn't as strong as that of a true carnivore or omnivore. It's wishful thinking that it all gets broken down by our stomach acid. Even if you choose not to believe that meat putrefies in our intestines, you have to at least admit that meat has no fiber, which is essential to our bodies, to expel toxic waste. The foods that are protective to our colon and our general health are plant foods. While meat is full of endotoxins, carcinogenic heterocyclic amines, viruses, and dioxins, meat does rot in your colon as long as you define rotting as putrefaction. Not only that, meat consumption is linked to higher colon cancer risk, most likely because of the longer time it takes to dispel the animal source foods from our body. The best way to protect and increase your health 
is to eat a whole foods plant-based diet. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll see you in my next one.